for as much time as she might consume. Thank you very, very much, uh, Congresswoman Diane Watson. Thank you for taking out this uh, hour uh, to remember uh, Dr. Dorothy Height. Um, I appreciate um, the fact uh, that you not only organized this time, but you understood how important it is for all of us who knew her, who loved her, who worked with her, uh, to just stop uh, and remember her in this very, very special way. Um, when I learned of her death, I immediately thought about March 24th, 2004. That's when she received the great recognition uh, from um, the Congress of the United States receiving the gold medal, the highest civilian award uh, that can be given uh, to a United States citizen. Um, I remember that because uh, when that ceremony took place, I remember watching her and reflecting that she had done for this country. I remember not only uh, the fact that she was the one woman in the civil rights movement uh, that was dominated by men who set in on the discussions about the civil rights legislation, the voting rights legislation. Uh, and this was at a time when women were not welcomed uh, at the helm of the civil rights movement. But Dorothy Height uh, was a very special woman, and I'm sure that no matter what some of the men thought, they couldn't have turned her down uh, because of her special way of handling uh, situations. She was a highly cultured woman, uh, articulate, uh, refined, uh, and always uh, able uh, to help temper uh, situations that could be explosive. So Dorothy Height uh, had a way of managing not only herself, but managing those around her. Uh, I heard Congresswoman Watson, as I was coming in, talk about the black family reunions, and they stand out as part of her tremendous work. At a time when uh, black families were being demonized, being talked about as dysfunctional, uh, she not only showed that we are a people who care and love our families, uh, but we came out to these great uh, reunions in very special ways. Uh, I remember seeing young black males carrying their babies, and I remember seeing uh, young children uh, being held by the hand by their grandmothers. So the mothers and the fathers, the sisters and the brothers, the uncles and the aunts, everybody came out to these tremendous family reunions. And I can recall not only attending in Washington, D.C., but in my hometown of Los Angeles. I was there with Dorothy Height, number one, because I respected her, I admired her, but she expected me to be there. Uh, we were friends for many, many years, uh, dating back to our struggles in the Carly administration when we have created the International Women's Year, and we all convened in Houston, Texas, to create the Women's Commission that was appointed uh, by Carter. I was there as a young woman uh, long before I came on the national scene uh, and helped to organize on that floor the final statements that... Um, we delivered to President Carter that created the uh, National Women's Commission. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dorothy Height has been at the center of every significant development on behalf of women. Not only did she work in the civil rights movement, she worked for women. Uh, and she's been there in those struggles, working with the National Organization for Women, the National Women's Political Caucus, all of those organizations that sprung up uh, when we finally began to realize that we had power and we could exercise power and influence, not only in helping to advance women uh, in this country, but advance public policy as it relate, related to women and families. And so Dr. Dorothy Height, who sat at the foot of Mary McLeod Bethune, the greatest educator that ever um, uh, involved herself in education in this country, had a great impact on Dorothy Height. And Dorothy Height was a big supporter of education. And she often told of the stories of Dr. 
uh, Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, she often shared with us the very special moment she had with her and the kind of influence that she had on her and uh, her leadership. And so she's gone. And there are those who are asking, who's going to take her place? Well, no one can really take her place. There is no other and will be no other like Dorothy Height. Uh, of course, there are many brilliant women. There are visionary women. There are articulate women. There are women who um, can manage at the highest levels. But you can't replicate uh, Dorothy Height. We can hope that someone takes her place who will honor uh, the contributions that she's made and give leadership to the National Council of Negro Women uh, in a manner that she would be proud of. But no one can actually take her place. Um, I stand here this evening uh, to say that uh, Dorothy Height not only was special and one of a kind, I loved her. I honored the time that I was able to spend with her. I honored the birthday celebrations that I was able to go to. I honored the times that um, she attended all of the chapter meetings across this country, and I happened to be in some city or some state where she was, where I attended those chapter meetings. I honor having known her because I think it certainly uh, gave me not only insight into what she was all about, but the inspiration that she provided uh, for me and the lessons that I learned from her. And so this evening I simply say that uh, we wish her journey to heaven to be uh, the kind of journey where she will certainly rest in peace and get the rest that she so uh, richly deserves. Uh, but we want her family to know and all of those who perhaps didn't know her how much she has meant not only to women and to the civil rights movement but to this country and we want to honor her in this very very special way on the floor of Congress so that it will be recorded in the congressional record adding to all of the other ways that she will be etched into the history of this country and this world. Thank you, Dorothy, for having served. Thank you for having led us. Thank you for having been the kind of public servant that helped this country to be a better country. And I yield back the balance of my time. I want to thank you, <coughs> Representative Waters, and for your association over the years with her and following in her footsteps, you know, we all joined hands together. Because I think those family reunions were a very special moment in our communities. And we remind each other of the importance of our family bonds. And we show this country that we can stay together and our families are not dysfunctional. And that's what she stood for. And so I thank you for